what's up musers this is John at muse for you and in today's video tutorial I'm going to be giving you a quick tip on using the crop tool in Adobe Muse so in this video tutorial we're going to be looking at a common issue when it comes to resizing images in Adobe Muse so if I open up Adobe Muse and then I go to my folder here and I'm going to click hold and drag this image into Adobe Muse okay we can see it's very large and if I try to resize this image um, by going to the control bar up here and I set the width to let's say 300 and uh, I have it to constrain proportionally so it's 300 by 225 we can see that uh, the image it just cuts off the whole image and all we see is this this part of the image the upper left hand corner of the image um, and with the crop tool this is where the crop tool comes into play really well because you can actually move the image within uh, this image frame and we can resize the image as well with the crop tool so this is what we'll be going over in this video tutorial so let's begin so I'm going to open up Adobe Muse I'm going to go to file new site and I'm going to click OK then I'm going to double click on the home page to go to preview it in the design view and the crop tool is actually over here to the left in the Adobe Muse toolbar and it's actually it's a hand with like two arrows, if I can put it that way. Um, it's kind of like this interesting symbol there, but if you hover over it, it'll say crop tool, or you can hit C on your keyboard to select the crop tool. So I have the crop, to I have the crop tool selected, and as you can see, it shows us that symbol with kind of a pointer, and we can't really do anything with it yet because you mostly use the crop tool for images, um, and the crop tool works really well. If you're a perfectionist like me and you want your, your images to be an exact width and height, this is where the crop tool comes into play really well. So that's the reason why I'm making this video. I found it very useful for myself. And basically, I'll show you kind of what I mean by that. So I'm going to insert, um, I just opened this folder, and I'm going to insert this first image here. So I'm going to click, hold, and drag, and place it in Adobe Muse. All right, as you can see, it's very large. And if I go to view, fit page and window, um, I can see the whole image and I can resize it by clicking the corner here uh, until I've selected the corner and just dragging it in. All right, but now let's say I wanted to make this image, you know, 300 by 300. Um, it's kind of, I could do it, but it, it's not the easiest way to do it. And it's not, let's say exact. Uh, the reason why I like the crop tool so I'm going to undo that resize I just did. So we have the image here. And if I select the crop tool over here to the left, and then if I hover hover over the image now, there's this circle with, with another smaller circle within it showing me that uh, I can select this image with the crop tool. So if I click in the center there, I now have the image selected and I can resize the image. So I can go up here to the width and height and if I un uncheck the constraint width and height proportionally, I can make this image exactly uh, a square, 300 by 300. Okay, and there it is. So I've made the image 300 by 300. And actually, I that's um, I kind of messed that up a little bit. Uh, let's just con let's constrain the proportions. Otherwise, the image gets screwed. Gets skewed. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to make, let's say, because the height is smaller, I'm going to make the height 300. So now the image is 400 by 300. All right, so there's the image. And rather than moving it, I'm not going to move it. And just leave it there. Now we've cropped the image inside the image frame, but we still have this image frame, which is really big. Now this is where we can get kind of creative. Uh, we can now make the image frame 300 by 300, a perfect square. And I'll show you kind of what I mean by that. So in the width, I'm going to do 300. And in the height, I'm going to do 300. And now I have a 300 by 300 uh, square. And the image is not skewed. So if I select the crop tool again, you can see that the image inside this 300 by 300 image frame um, is actually extends out of the frame. And I can actually move the image just like so, which is pretty cool. Um, so I could even move it like out of the image frame with the crop tool or I can um, select the, the image again and just place it perfectly so that it fits nicely in the 300 by 300 square all right so 
hopefully that made sense. I'm going to do it one more time just to, to show you. So let's say my idea is to have a perfect 300 by 300 uh, picture and, you know, have it three times like within my website. And these images obviously aren't perfect squares and they're really big. So I'm going to select uh, this image again. Or actually, let me um, select this image and just place it in. And I'll delete this one. So we have this image here. So again, I'm going to make it 300 by 300. So I'm going to select the crop tool, select the image in the center by selecting that circle in the center, uh, and constrain proportion so the image doesn't get skewed. And in the width, I'm going to say, actually, the height is is less than the width. So we're going to start with the height because if I started with the width and I set it to 300, then the height would be less than 300. So I'm going to set the height to 300. And there's the image. Now I'm going to select the select tool uh, here in the toolbar, click on the image frame. And then I'm going to unconstrain the proportions and make it 300 by 300. So there it is. And now if I select the crop tool, I can move more of that image kind of in that 300 by 300 image frame. And that's it. So there's the that. And then I can pick another image. All right, select the crop tool. And constrain proportions 300. Select the image frame and unconstrained proportions 300 by 300. And very good. And I can reposition the image inside the frame by selecting the crop tool kind of like how it is initially. So there it is. And then I'm going to select um, one more. I'm going to do this, this one right here. And there it is. Select the crop tool, select the circle in the center, constrain proportions, 300 by 300. Oh, see, uh, I changed the width. I want to change the height. So there we go. Change the height, select the image frame, constrain, uh, unconstrained proportions, set it to 300 by 300. So now I have uh, three perfect 300 by 300 image frames and the image is nicely inside those uh, boxes there. All right, and I can do, let me change the browser fill here. There we go. Let's just make sure that they're nice and evenly distributed. And I can even put my logo in here. So there's my logo and I want to make it a bit smaller. So I'll, I'll select the crop tool. Now, normally you could do something like, you know, yeah, select the angle and just make it smaller. But I like working with numbers and getting everything exact because it helps me design the site. So I'm going to select the crop tool, select in the center, and I'm going to change the, uh, the width and height of this image. Right now it's 500 by 500. I'll make it 300 uh, or 250 by 250. Then I'll select the image frame and I can do the same with the image frame uh, because it was initially a perfect circle from the beginning. So there it is, it's perfectly 250 by 250. I have my images here. And yeah, it's just a really great way to uh, get your images exact rather than you know placing an image and then trying to resize it so that you, know, you can get it to look great. And it, it allows you to crop the image to let's say a perfect square if it's not a perfect square and help with your design process um, on your website. Um, so that's it, pretty much it, I think. And actually there's one more thing that I wanted to mention. What's great about placing your images inside of Adobe Muse like this is that you can give it an image, uh, at you, can, um, you can edit the image properties and give it an alternative text and a tooltip. And this is great for search engines because the search engines will know what your image is about. Uh, when you place an image, like if I do a rectangle and I place the image, like I could do a rectangle um, like so, and I can make the rectangle exactly, you know, 300 uh, by 300. And then if I go to fill, add image, and I'll just kind of search to those images. Uh, let me just search for them real quick. And, you know, let's say I did this image here that I have here at the bottom, and then I did scale to fill, and then I centered it. All right, so it's, it's kind of like that, and you, you ha do have a little bit of control. You can move it around, but, you know, not full control, like as if you were to crop uh, an image like we did with the crop tool. And the other thing, by placing an image inside a rectangle, if I right-click, 
I can't give it um, alternative text or a tool tip um, to, to show what this image is about. Like for instance, if I were to right click on this image here at the bottom that we cropped, right clicked, edit image properties, and I said uh, image, um, you know, lady taking a photo. Um, a so for alternative text, this is an image of a lady, or you know, lady taking a photo in the snow. That's fine. All right, so there it is. And if I hit Command Shift E, and I leave my mouse over it, it gives me a tooltip of what this image is about. I can't do that with the rectangle. Or if I wanted to do it with my logo, I could right click, edit image properties, and I could say Muse for you logo, logo of, of Muse for you. So now the search engines will see that and it'll give this image more of a description. So if I hover my mouse, it says Muse for you logo. All right, and that lets people know what the image is about. You can do that by just, by the method of placing the image onto your website, um, not so much with creating a rectangle and filling the rectangle with an image. Uh, filling a rectangle with an image works well when you're doing scroll effects and the such, or it works well in other cases as well. Um, yeah, scroll effects, fixed background, parallax effects, and maybe other a uh, few other ideas that you know uh, could come up or, or is good for the rectangle tool and filling the image inside the rectangle tool. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the uh, crop tool. It's an awesome tool. It really lets it really helps you get your images exact and it's just a great tool to use. So that's pretty much it for this video tutorial. If you like this video tutorial, please subscribe below. You'll get access to the muse for You private community, the Google Plus private community. You'll get news and updates on new video tutorials that come out from the muse for You YouTube channel, and you'll get news and updates on new animations and uh, icon sets from muse for shopcom Yeah, and uh, definitely visit muse for shopcom I have free resources, video tutorials, Edge Animate and Adobe Muse video tutorials and just a lot of cool stuff on that website and i have the shop where you can check out some of the animations i've created to help you brand and add more interest to your website so uh yeah thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next video tutorial